do the same again. Uh, whoop, cheers, stamp your feet, welcome to the stage, Garrett Mellorick. All three, start the round of applause. One, two, three, go! Let's go, welcome to the stage, Garrett Mellorick! Yay! 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 Let me go Phil Chapman! Oh, Liverpool Friday Late Show, you beautiful bastards! <laughs> Look at this! Buckets full of beer! Look at you all in here fucking rammed in tight, not wearing masks, drinking what's left of your immune systems. <laughs> yes, please! Let's bring it back! I want another pandemic! Last two years, best two years of my fucking life. I got gout. Yeah! I got the disease of a 17th century medieval sovereign! Thank you very much, Liverpool. Turns out lying on the floor, sculling counter Stella Artois, watching Tiger King can really hurry that shit on a little bit. Hi, the pandemic lockdown number one. I had to go to hospital, jug at the side of Liverpool. I've got to say, the doctors and nurses were incredible. Can I kick off my set with a round of applause for the doctors and nurses of the NHS? Yeah. Yeah. The admin staff were cunts, though. <laughs> Real pieces of shit. <laughs> Turns out the only way you make those little goblins worse, clap them every Thursday, call them heroes, like, I'm a hero! <laughs> Not you! No one meant you! You're a dick who can't use Microsoft Excel or manage basic manners. No one was clapping for you, you cunt. <laughs> Big laugh for that over there. Feeling a bit of a pullback for it in that direction of the room. And I get it, I get it, I get it. People who are uncomfortable, I understand. You sat there going, no, come on, Garrett. They do work for the NHS. They are on the payroll. That does make them health heroes. Clap, 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 clap. <laughs> I'd have said to anyone that was uncomfortable with that, I did that routine last Tuesday to a room full of doctors and nurses and got a standing ovation. <laughs> Now, I had a good time during the pandemic. Uh, knocked my wife up, had a COVID baby. Thank you. We had a little girl baby. You're goddamn right. I was so pleased we had a girl baby. I didn't want to be responsible for bringing another white man into the world. Uh, uh, I was so sure it was going to be a boy. I was reading my wife's bump, The Guardian, screaming up her vagina every day, going, Time's up, you little fucker! came out, it was a girl, I was like, thank God, ladies, I'm part of the solution. <laughs> then I realised, actually, my daughter's going to be an affluent white lady whose parents work in the arts, and those people are scum of the fucking earth, aren't they, son? <laughs> Dodged a bullet and got hit by a missile, what are you going to do? <laughs> She's good fun though, I like her, I like having her around, she's good mileage. I don't want her to die, so I've had to quit smoking. <laughs> yeah, I miss it, I miss it, I miss everything about smoking. I miss, I mean, not the act of smoking, it's corrosive, expensive and disgusting. I miss being able to say to anyone at any point during a night out, yeah man, that's really interesting, I'm just nipping out for a fag. <laughs> I don't have that anymore, I've got to be honest with people, look them dead in the eye and go, excuse me mate, you're boring the fucking arse off me. I'm going to go and stand in the rain. <laughs> Incidentally, if there's anyone in this room here this evening who has ever said the following sentence, I don't know why people still smoke. <laughs> you. <laughs> you're the reason people still smoke. We'd rather go outside in the freezing cold and the rain and look at a picture of a dead baby on a small cardboard box <laughs> and engage in a slow, painful 40-year suicide than listen to any more of your rancid chat. <laughs> a few people need that clean, <laughs> cleared up for them. It's nice to be out. It's nice to see people out having a good time, smiling and, and you know, enjoying themselves, having a drink. Because Britain is a very angry place right now. You feeling this? Very angry. It's angry online. It's angry out in the streets. The whole place is just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I get it. Look, we've been locked up for two years. We got out at the end of last summer and we're like, oh, finally freedom. They're like, hang on a minute. Greta's back. <laughs> oh, fuck. <laughs> All right, Greta, leave us alone, you humanist bitch. We'll use the right bin, okay? <laughs> I'll use the right bin, all right? I'll put the plaid. Just fuck off, would you?
would you? It's been a tough couple of years. Then we found out that Downing Street's a lot more fun to work out than any of us ever imagined. We got angry. And then we're stepping into 2022 going, are we going to have a summer, go on holiday, maybe some music festivals? Nah, Putin pops up and goes, how about World War Three? <laughs> Give us a minute, Putin, you marmot face cunt. It's been a difficult couple of years. Give us a summer. And look, there's generational differences. There's generation differences to the types of anger knocking around. Like, older people are angry for different reasons to younger people. Older people, I get it. You're angry because you now have to live without hope. Because <laughs> you told yourself lies to get through your shitty lives, didn't you? You woke up in the morning and went, I've got to go to work, but if I just had some free time, I could realise my potential. <laughs> I could learn Spanish. I could get fit. I could pick up the guitar, I could have a great life, but you now know that's not fucking true. <laughs> Two years, nothing but time. What happened? You came out a slightly fatter piece of shit than you went in. <laughs> and you're angry because you now have to admit that time was never your enemy. <laughs> you. You were your own enemy, and you're furious, and I understand that. And young people, there are lots of young people in the audience here this evening, I have to see you. Yeah, woo indeed, and you're furious, I get it young people, I understand, you're very angry, I understand why, it's very simple. It's because you were promised they'd die. <laughs> you were promised, they had press conferences and they said everyone's gonna know someone is gonna die and you sat there quietly going, finally, I'll get on the housing ladder. <laughs> We can rejoin Europe. My balls will be empty from the spunk I have ejaculated on my copy of the Communist Manifesto. As I dream of the socialist utopia we're gonna build together. Get in the ground, Grandma. It's time for the new age. And they didn't die, did they? We lost so much. Debenhams, Captain Tom, but... They didn't die. They're still here fucking your shit up. And you now know that you cannot kill baby boomers. They're like asbestos. They're gonna be fucking your shit up till the end of time. Next week when Putin nukes us, the only thing left on the planet are gonna be baby boomers renting out their second homes to the cockroaches that are crawling the earth. And you get it and you're furious, I understand. I empathize but I can't relate fully because I am not an old man and I am not a young man. I'm what is known as a middle-aged man. A middle-aged man. I found out I was a middle-aged man a couple of years ago. Uh, not because I have a mortgage and, and a baby and grey hair. I have to pee twice in the night and have the subtitles on Netflix to understand what the fuck's going on. It's not how I discovered my youth was ebbing away. No, I discovered my youth had ebbed away because my email spam changed. <laughs> Used to get young man email spam as a 14, started a Hotmail account, I got young man email spam. 10, 15, 20 of these messages a day. All the men in the, in the room will know about young man email spam. <laughs> Ladies, I'll fill you in. It's not a subtle form of communication. It says things like, Do you like to fuck hot sluts in your area? There are hot sluts waiting to fuck you now! and they're hot and they're wet and they're slutty. And do you know where they are? They're in your postcode. You know your postcode? The sluts are right there. They're right in the postcode. You know the postman who delivers you the mail? It's fucking amazing he can make it to your house. He's knee deep in sluts every day. Get out of the way, sluts. So many wet sluts in the postcode. Do you want to fuck the sluts? Because they want to fuck you. But not with that cocktail sausage you call a dick. Do you want a bigger dick? We got pills and potions, lotions, pumps and creams. Get a nice big dick and you can fuck these sluts. I don't get those emails anymore. <laughs> I miss them now, they're gone. I'm a middle-aged man, so I get middle-aged man email spam. The internet knows I have no interest in fucking sluts. 
whatever postcode they happen to be in. <laughs> and I made peace with the dick I was given a while ago. But the internet wants to grab my attention, so it sends me middle-aged email spam. Very different sort of message. Similar sort of tone, it says things like, would you like to release equity from your property? <laughs> Look at your property there, your hot, wet, throbbing property. Release all that sexy equity from your property. And you know what you can do then? You know what you can do then, big boy? You could put solar panels on the roof, lower your electricity bills, and higher equity! But how would I know how much equity I am saving? Get yourself a smart meter! Mmm, lovely, sexy, smart meter. Have a good eye on your equity, know what you're saving. And you know what you do then when you've got a big pile of equity? You know what you do then? You should plan for a funeral! <laughs> Nobody should have that much equity without knowing where they're going to rot in the ground. Buy a plot, plan for a funeral, get the solar panels, get the smart meter! Equity, equity, equity! And you know what you can do then? You know what you can do then? <laughs> you can remortgage your property! And then you can get a second property and you can get one of those Netflix loving, coffee drinking, avocado fucks to live in it. They can pay for both of your houses. You won't even have to fix the boiler. <laughs> so I'm a middle aged man. <laughs> Yeah, um... <laughs> just, just take a minute. I'm sorry, man, I'm gonna need one of these. Uh... I was gonna say cheers. In a minute. I've got a job to do and I'm a fucking professional. <laughs> no, no, you don't want to hear what it sounds like burping into a PA. <laughs> yeah, that'd be fun. You all go home feeling slightly sick. I'm like, Jesus, that really does amplify the sound. Is it, is it your birthday? Oh, it's his birthday. Now that's a heckle, sorry. <laughs> Come on to Liverpool, burp for me. <laughs> you guys are legitimately fucking weird, I've got to say. The early show were weird, but yeah, burp for me. How much cash you got on you? All right, this has been fun. <laughs> Thanks for the drink. <laughs> What's your friend's name? Happy birthday, Daniel. <laughs> cool. Uh, if you'd like to follow me on Facebook or... <laughs> Instagram or whatever, you can do that. It's uh, at, at, at Millerick Comedy. Um, if you've got, uh, like, if you want to, if you've been offended by anything I said here this evening, like the Captain Tom thing or the slut stuff, and you, <laughs> and you want to, like, send me a tweet or an email or something, like, uh, like, you know, respectfully, I won't read it. <laughs> so why don't you go and scream your opinion into a fucking bin? <laughs> There has been some confusion in comedy recently. There's been a lot of confusion, okay, about like the, the, you know, what this is for. This only exists in this room and to the losers watching it on the internet. Uh, 
Guys, it's over. Get outside. <laughs> Fucking nerds. <laughs> no, but we do appreciate your business. Thank you very much. That's <laughs> fine. It's only exists in this room for us to let off a bit of steam, right? It's not important, right? But if you've got, um, basically like, in this room I really care what you all think about everything because it's my job to, I really care about it, you know? And I hope this evening if you found something funny in my set, you found the freedom to laugh. Uh, and if you didn't find something funny, you found the freedom not to, like that lady. <laughs> I've taken both of those things on board and, and we're done now, okay? So basically what I'm trying to say is like, this evening was yours, right? Because you paid for it. And all of the other evenings are mine, so fuck off. <laughs> you got a fantastic headliner ahead of you. My name's Garrett Miller, I'll see you again. Thank you very much.